Jays on Sportsnet. Brought to you by the 2014 Honda Civic, Canada's best-selling car 16 years in a row, and the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. And by Home Hardware, homeowners helping homeowners with expert advice. Welcome, everyone, on this Sunday from St. Petersburg, Florida, inside Tropicana Field. Game 10 of a 10-game road trip that'll send the Toronto Blue Jays right into the All-Star break. And the All-Star on the hill for the Tampa Bay Rays, the left-hander, David Price. This is a lineup that he'll face here on this Sunday, a lot of right-handed bats for the manager, John Gibbons. And when you take a look at Jose Bautista, back at the right field and against Price, hitting 341, five home runs and 11 RBIs. And how about Steve Tollison? He came in on a Friday night for the injured Munenori Kawasaki over the last six games, hitting 471 with a home run and five ribbies. Blue Jays starting to swing the bat a little bit. They had nine more hits yesterday. They're going to have to be in tough against David Price this afternoon. Moved from Saturday's start to today's start because of illness. He got off to a rough start this year. His first 11 starts this year, he was sitting at just 4-4 four and four with a 442 earn run average, but he has turned his season around. Great numbers there. 342 earn run average. He has worked at least eight innings six times in his last nine starts. Nine times total for the season, which is the most in the major leagues. Against the Blue Jays, he has got crazy numbers. 14-2 and two in his career versus the Blue Jays. The defense behind him, Geyer in left. Kiermaier in center playing for the injured Desmond Jennings. And out at right field is Zobris, his third consecutive start in right field. Longoria Escobar on the left side, on the right side, fourth side, and Loney. And the battery today is David Price, the 2012 Cy Young Award winner. And Molina is his catcher. Well, when you're a young player like Kevin Kiermaier, you got to do something to get the attention of your manager. And yesterday, he did three things that were outstanding. First batter of the game, he lofts a ball in the right field. And when Anthony goes lays back on it, he hustles this into a double to start their game off on a good note. And then he bounces a ball to the left side of the infield and through for two runs. He hustled his all way all the way into scoring position where he would later score on this. He scored and then went to third base. Watch him go from first to third, surprising Melky Cabrera with that great speed. He's an electric player. We heard about him before this series started, and he's getting his chance now to impress his teammates. Jose Reyes to lead things off here on this Sunday. Great to have you along as the pitch is fouled off to the right side. Reyes hitting 274 with seven home runs and 28 RBIs. Jose awaits as Price deals and the pitch is low. But he goes after it. And quickly 0-2. Well, I think you have to be very aggressive against David Price. He'll set you up. He'll attack you with that fastball. He's got the best strikeout to walk ratio of major leagues this year. Comes right after you. The 0-2 is jammed off to the right side. So many rumors swirling around with David Price and He's obviously having to deal with that. And in fact, last week, after his start, he was in the hot tub and he got the call to, to the manager's office. And he was like, what, what right now? I got I got it. They're like, yes, we need we need to see you right now. Joe Madden wants to see you right now. And and he's thinking to himself, oh, no, is this it? And he goes into the manager's office and the manager says, Congratulations, you've made the all-star team. And he said, oh. <laughs> That's it? That's all you want me? You got me out of my off day. He was getting ready for his start last Sunday. Yeah. In Detroit, when that happened. The 0-2. Swing and a miss. 
Well, David Price has always had a great strikeout ratio. He's always had the great arm. He has stepped in. He's a true number one. His strikeout to walk by year, he's striking out more batters in 2014 than he has in the last four years, almost eight strikeouts per nine innings. He doesn't walk anybody. He's a true number one, I think. He's going to give you innings. He's going to challenge you. He'll give up his share of hits and he'll give up his share of home runs, but he's going to come right after you. Melky Cabrera hitting 299. And first pitch swinging fouls it off to the right side. He was hitless yesterday. 0 for 5, a rarity for Melky Cabrera. Cabrera had two hits on Friday night. Jays, as you know, have won just two games on this road trip. So they would like to win this one today. And then, of course, if they do, it would be their first series that they've won here. And Tampa St. Pete since April of 2007. Outfield. Pretty much straight away, Kiermeyer in center, about two steps toward the gap. And the pitch misses. Two balls and one strike. Blue Jays, you were talking about the road trip. They have run into some really good pitchers on this road trip. They saw Sonny Gray and the All Star Scott Casimir when we were in Oakland and Jeff Weaver. And CJ Wilson. Now they get David Price. They saw Jeff Smarja when they were out in Oakland. They have run into some really good pitchers. The offense, I think, has been a lot better. The last three or four games, we're starting to see some good at bats put up by the Blue Jays. Yesterday got away from them as they lost 10 3. Won 8 5 on Friday night, up 5 2, and then Sean Rodriguez with a three run home run off of Dusty to McGowan tied it up. But Steve Tollison had a great at bat, gave him the lead 7 5. Hutch was good yesterday, and then Lost it in his sixth inning. Full count offering. And it's outside in a walk. So a strikeout. And now a walk. And that'll bring up Jose Bautista, who has had success against Price. And Price has had just, and you mentioned this earlier, Tab, it's just a tremendous amount of success against the Toronto Blue Jays, 14 and 2, with a career. 2.45 ERA, and this is his 19th career start against Toronto. That winning percentage is the best in the major league history versus Toronto. And ERA is third best in the history against the Blue Jays. And here at Tropicana Field, 7 and 2 with a 1.62 ERA in 10 starts. Bautista right back through the middle with a base hit. Cabrera on the way to third, and Kiermeyer tosses it into second. The runners at the corners here in the top half of inning number one. Jose came into this game hitting 341 in his career versus David Price. 14 hits and 41 at bats, and he shows you why. Right back through the middle. Looked like it was off the end of the bat just a little bit, and that allowed Melky Cabrera to go all the way to third base. Jose keeps hitting David Price. He'll challenge him with a fastball, and we all know what Jose Bautista can do to a fastball. So Dan Johnson is the hitter. This is his third game since his contract being purchased from Buffalo on Friday. Runners at the corners and an RBI opportunity here. And the pitch is in there for a strike. Calling the balls in strikes. Sean Barber behind the plate. Tim Timmons over at first base. Todd Titchener back at second. And Mike Everett in the rocking chair down at third. Dan 
playing first base. And there's a strike 0 and 2 the count of patient hitter. Friday night. The Blue Jays 6 for 11 with the runners in scoring position. Not the case yesterday just 3 for 12. Not afraid to take those pitches and that's why price is so tough. You can see where those first two pitches are one on the inside corner. And one now on the outside corner. The 0 2. Trying to pick that outside corner once again. And the count of one and two and. Price looks in and says it's one and two right. Alina says yes one and two just get the. Confirmation. Johnson just remains in the batter's box saying all right bring it. And a toss over to first base. And Bautista is back easily. A little run support early on would be nice for R.A. Dickey in the Jays. One away. Some runs period for R.A. Dickey. Yeah. Had trouble scoring runs for him. And the pitch is up. Two and two. And the approach for Dan Johnson, he likes to see pitches. Yeah, he's got a very good eye at the plate. A couple of tough pitches, first two in this at bat, and then a couple off the plate. He didn't even offer at him. Leading the minor leagues in base on balls when he was called up. And you can see why. He's very quiet at the plate. Check swing. Tell you what, they are making him work. 18 pitches already this inning, and he's got one out to show for it. Runners at the corners. Breaking ball outside. How about this at bat? Oh, lefty to lefty. To three and two. You know, when you throw like David Bryce, and he has got one of the best fastballs, he has averaged almost 94 miles per hour in seven of his last 11 starts. When you have that kind of fastball, and you lead Major League Baseball in strikeouts, you don't need to pick at the corner. Former teammates Price to Johnson and jammed right back to Price. Got him in on the hands. That's what you have to do. You have to attack. You got to use that fastball. You don't have to be perfect when you throw that hard. This ball runs right in on Dan Johnson. It's a check swing. Blue Jays can't get that runner in from third with less than two outs. Now it's going to take a hit. Eric Kratz, the designated hitter. And a pitch down low and outside. 1 0 oh the count to Kratz, hitting 203. Three home runs. And 10 RBIs. Outfield straight away from the stretch. Price deals and it's down low. And the count now 2 and 0. Oh. And an opportunity here for Kratz. At third base, Cabrera walked and went to third on a base hit back through the middle off of the bat of Jose Bautista. The pitch swung on, hit in the air to left center field, and cutting over is Geyer. And Geyer makes the catch, and that ends the top half of inning number one as Price gets out of a jam.
Here on this Sunday, here's his lineup. Uh, without Desmond Jennings, Kevin Kiermeyer taking over. And how about this? Over the last three games, he is 8 for 11 with a home run and seven RBIs for the Fort Wayne, Indiana product. And Jose Molina, last four games. And Jose Molina doesn't hit much, but he is five for his last 15. In fact, his batting average, 192. And oh, by the way, you look at the stolen base, he's two for two with a stolen base. One against Houston, one against the Jays, and the one against the Jays, he got a standing ovation. Standing ovation yesterday with that. Ari Dickey getting set for his 20th start of the season. Looking at even his record at eight and eight. He snapped a four-game losing streak last time out. Seven shutout innings versus the Angels. That's the longest start without an earned run in 2014 for R.A. So a missed opportunity for sure for the Jays in the top half of the first. And Kiermaier takes a pitch down and in. Hitting 310, eight homers, 24 RBIs. Hit all of 15 homers in his brief time in the minors. First right handed hitting, hitting 345, and seven of those eight. And the count now three and one. In on the turf is Francisco at third, and the 3 1 is foul back. Challenges him. Fastball right there, 78 miles an hour. Take a little something off of it. The guy's got a lot of speed, so you got to be sure-handed in the field. Down and in, and a lead-off walk here in the bottom of the first inning. Cabrera, Mastriani. In center field, and Jose Bautista back at right for the first time since June 22nd. Francisco Reyes, Tollison, and Johnson, and the battery, Dickey, and Josh Tolley. Yeah, it's been a while for Jose since he's been out in the outfield for the Blue Jays. He's still first on this team in outfield assists, though. Eight outfield assists. Good to see him out there in right field. Kiermaier does have speed at first, and so Dickey checks on him. Mastriani in the outfield for the seventh time. Out in center field. And the pitch to Zobrist. And the Rays will pick their spots when they're going to run against Aria Dickey. Very quick to the plate. He's got a quick move over to first base, but trying to throw catch that knuckleball Josh Tolley tough to throw out a base runner she's two for 15 this year that one dips down low as you mentioned he had a great outing in Anaheim against the Angels and that ended a streak of dropping four consecutive Starts and checks in once again. A quick move that time yeah. by RA. Very quick over to first base. And it looked like Kiermeyer was leaning. Like he wanted to be on the move. Watch him over at first base, starting to lunge and say, Whoops, I gotta get back. Johnson applies that tag. Two and oh the count. And that one flutters in there for a strike. That leadoff walk. Interesting to note that the Six walks back on to March 31st, the most in a game this season for RA. Had just one against the Angels, three in Oakland, one against the White Sox, just two in Cincinnati, and two in Baltimore. They moved R.A. Dickey up to make this final start before the All-Star break. He's had good numbers in this ballpark. Three balls, two strikes. Saw the Rays six times last year. One of those games was a two-hit shutout right here in Tampa back in June of 2013. And once again, checking on Kiermaier. 
bottom of inning number one here. Final game. Of the first half for the Blue Jays. And the Rays Rays game number 97. And a swing and a miss. Obrist is out. Knuckleball three and two. That ball was floating right off the plate. And Zobris, in his haste to get a base hit, swings that maybe a pitch out of the strike zone. Still surprised that Kiermai is at first base. That he hasn't launched towards second base, but RA's been paying close attention to him. 96 game for the Blue Jays. And a swing and a miss there by Matt Joyce, hitting 277 home runs and 39 RBIs. The 97 games for the Tampa Bay Rays tied with the Dodgers for the most in the majors this year and the most ever played by the Rays before the All Star break. And this one popped up off to the left side, and you know the importance of a day like today, not only for the series. Here in, in Tampa, but then also getting to 50 wins. Now you are playing more games prior to sure. the All Star break. Sure, the Blue Jays have a chance to do it for the first time since 1992. It's still nice to get to 50. It's a nice round number, isn't it? Heading into the break. Look, this uh, American League East is wide open, I think. And any team that gets hot at the right time and plays consistent baseball is going to win. Yeah, I think you think about Baltimore now. The Yankees won last night, so they're a game back now of the, the Blue Jays and the Orioles and the Yankees play tonight. Joyce awaits a 2 2. A swing and a miss, and he strikes out, so it's working now. After the leadoff walk, Zobris and Joyce strike out. Well, Ari Dickey with that knuckleball is really working. He's going to get them chasing it, and that average is going to go down. In June, they hit 333 against the knuckleball, in July, just 125, and it's because they're chasing. It's dancing, and it's dancing in the zone and then out of the strike zone. You'll have your share of strikeouts. And he's really controlled it. High in the air off the first base side, and Dan Johnson looks it back into the tenth row. You know, that's the thing that I've been impressed about. It's just one walk last inning, yep. or excuse me, last start against the Los Angeles Angels in seven innings. Just seven walks in his last 28 and two thirds. Once again, Kiermeyer logging a lot of time diving back into that first base bag. Longoria really struggling here as this one gets away from Tolly a couple of times, but Kiermeyer staying close to that bag. You can tell that the rookie's just a little bit uncertain over yeah. there at first base. Very uncertain. You got a chance to, to move up 90 feet, get in scoring position for their big RBI guys. Watch him as he takes a secondary lead. He's a very aggressive base runner. Tapped right out in front of the dish. Tolly fires over to first base, and that's going to do it. Longoria now 0 for 9 in this series. We go to the top of the second inning.
Cardi Front Row to at Blue Jays on Twitter. You could win front row seats for you and three friends to a 2014 Blue Jays home game. Prize includes round trip airfare to Toronto and two nights accommodation. Full contest rules at bluejays.com slash Bacardi front row. Great to see all the Jays fans here in the Tampa St. Pete area for this series. As the Blue Jays conclude the first half. They'll be back in action at home back at the Rogers Center this Friday against Texas. As they begin a seven game homestand. Three games against the Rangers and then the Boston Red Sox come to town on July 21st. Blue Jays just went out west and had a tough roll through Oakland and Los Angeles while the Baltimore Orioles were facing Texas in Boston and that's where they made up their games. They beat up on them while the Blue Jays had a tough trip out there. That's going to now reverse where the Blue Jays are now playing the last place Texas team the last place Boston Red Sox and the Baltimore Orioles are going out west so it could be a big week right after the All Star break. Tollison. Well Boston's 10 games under 500 and for the Texas Rangers it has been a struggle throughout they own the worst record in all the baseball at 38 and 56. Tollison high in the air, the 264 hitter to right field, and there is Zobrist, and Zobrist will squeeze it for the first out here in the top half of the second inning. Isn't that ironic that that'll take us close to the trade deadline? Yeah. You know, a lot could happen in that week right after the All Star break. Then the Blue Jays hit the road and go to New York, as you saw on that skid ahead in Boston, another 10 game road trip that will take us right to the Trade deadline. Who knows what the American League East is going to look like then? Astriani fouls it off, and Baltimore leads the American League East, Tabby, at 51 and 42. Since realignment in 1994, only one other season would this put them in first place with that record in the AL East on this date, and that was 2000, where the Yankees led it. With a mark of 45 and 38. So I think that's why everybody looks at this AL East and says, hey, wide open. Wide open. It's wide open. Now, if you're Boston, you might not be thinking that. And if you're Tampa, depending upon, in all sincerity, how even today goes, that may even change things a little bit for them and how they view things as they, you know, have. A couple of weeks before the trade deadline. Their rumors swirl it about uh, David Price is the guy and he's going to go to Seattle or he's going to go to St. Louis or wherever. If they get hot, how do you trade this guy in a pennant race and tell your fans you're giving up? Can't do it. This is a team that with, with their starting rotation, they've done it in the past, they'll do it again. They can reel off 13 out of 15, something like that, and get right back in it. We saw Chris Archer on Friday night, a youngster who has learned so much, taken so much from David Price, who has been a mentor to him. And so, in trading Price, it's not that easy. Yeah, you look at the contract as Mastriani is out. Strike out two three. But you also lose somebody that in the clubhouse. A lot of youngsters can go to him and he has been a great teammate. Joe Madden was talking the other day with everything that's going on with David Price trading and possibly leaving the ball club. They said he's been a better teammate. Coming early staying late helping out his teammates doing whatever he can to help this team win. 28 years of age as Juan Francisco loops this one into left field and Francisco has a base hit off of a left hander. And that's going to bring up Josh Tolley. 
Looked like that one got right off the end of the bat for Francisco, but he stayed on top of that ball. Didn't hit it hard. Muscled it into left field for second Blue Jays hit of the afternoon. Just got to make your confidence feel pretty good getting a base hit off of Price. Well, you know he he loves to swing at that first pitch, but against Price, why not? If you're Francisco, why try to get deep in account? Just try to jump on it early. Just his third hit against the left-hander this year. Get ready. <laughs> Just get up there, and start hacking. Kier Meyer shading Tolley toward. The gap in left center field. Geyer shallow and left, and totally swings and misses. Price turns 29 years of age on August 26th. From Murfreesboro, Tennessee, just outside of Nashville. Went to Vanderbilt University, Commodore. And was just an outstanding player there. The first overall pick in the 2007 draft. The 0 2. Struck him out. He leads the American League in strikeouts. Came into the game with 159. He now has 162. Bob McCown started primetime sports in 1989. It built the foundation for Canada's first all sports radio station. Pantlo, 25 years of primetime sports, takes a closer look at Canada's most listened to sports talk presentation. As Bobcat would say, Wednesday, July 16th at 7.30 Eastern on four sports net channels. Look forward to that. Dickey deals low to Loney. This is what the Rays did to Ari Dickey first game of the season. They were very patient. They worked the count. They made him get that knuckleball over. And a right to Johnson. One away here in the bottom of the second inning. They have a patient approach anyway. They're not yes. a home run hitting team. They only have 77 home runs this season. So they have to work the count. They have to mix in their base on balls to keep the rallies going. This time Loney lined right out to, to Johnson at first base. They have to get themselves in good hitters counts. And Dickey will serve up a fastball to him. A strike to Brandon Geyer. Geyer in this series is four for nine. A double, a walk, and two runs scored. And the pitch is low. Good 
just missing outside. Guy around the season, 274, a home run and 14 RBIs. And a swing and a miss there. He almost came out of his shoes. Took a little something off that knuckleball. That's another thing that RA has been doing lately. He'll throw the hard one. And when you see 80 miles an hour, that's the hard knuckleball. That time it was about 70, 71. Took a little something off that one. Ground ball. Tapped. Right in front of the bag at second, scooped up by Reyes. And there's two down. Blue Jays on Sportsnet. Brought to you by the 2014 Honda Civic. Canada's best selling car 16 years in a row. And the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. You know, Escobar, after spending time on the 15 day DL was activated on Friday his third consecutive game against his former team hitting 249 and a swing and a miss four home runs in 22 RBIs three for seven in the series two walks and two runs scored he had two hits Yesterday, and Francisco allows that one to curve foul right in front of the bag and then quickly snares it. That looked like it was going to be a base hit all the way. Catching Francisco back. Escobar dropped the punt down. Looked like it was going to stay on that turf. Look at it starting to move. Look how close this comes to hitting the bag. And as soon as that ball goes foul, touch it. Foul ball 0 and 2. Francisco still back at third. And he's going to try it again. Hmm. Very interesting. Yeah, he was. Back there. And the pitch. A bit high. He knows that he's got two strikes. If he punts again and. Once it foul, he'll strike out. Yeah, I think that's why he's back, right? 2 2, fisted into shallow right center field at a base hit for Escobar with two outs. So Jose Molina is going to make his way to the plate, and Escobar loops that one into shallow right center field, and he's aboard. Ball is up, and that's what you want to do against the knuckleball. You want to make sure they get the ball up so you can see it. Anything from the thigh down, you got to let it go. Ball was up, and he clocks it in the right field. And Molina's hit in his back. The seventh batter hit this season by R.A. Looked like it might have caught him in the elbow. So over at first base is Molina Escobar at second and Logan Forsythe is the batter. Two for eight lifetime against R.A. Dickey. And that one dips low. Escobar with the lead here at the bottom of the second inning at second base. Molina close to the bag at first. Johnson plays behind him. And the pitch is in there for a strike at the count evens at one and one. comes through with an RBI as he goes the other way and scoring from second base is Escobar. 
Two outs, nobody on. A two-strike blooper, a hit batter, and then a base hit through the right side. Jose Bautista got eight outfield assists. He's looking for number nine. He's got a shot at Escobar, but cannot come up with it cleanly in right field. And just like that, the Rays score the game's first run. Bottom of the order. A seven, eight, nine hitters. Kiermeyer and the pitch is up and in, and he jumps out of the way. Kiermeyer walked back in the bottom of the first inning. Eight home runs and 24 RBIs. He also has four triples, 22 extra base hits, tied for the most in team history through their first 48 games of a career. 31st round draft choice. Runners at first and second in timeout as Kiermeyer tries to get something out of his right eye, it appears. Runners in scoring position, he is six for 30. However, in this series, the Rays have been extremely productive. You know, against Kansas City, three games, they're just three for 18, 167. In this series, they are 10 for 22 with runners in scoring position. And there's a strike. Three and one the count now. Molina at second, Forsyth with a lead at first. And a ground ball right back to Dickey and he tosses it over. To the first baseman, Dan Johnson, for the final out here of the bottom of the second inning. Coming up, Jose Reyes, Melky Cabrera, and Jose Bautista. by Baseball Canada and Little League Canada. Charlottetown PEI July 28th and 29th Victoria Park. Instructors include Jesse Barfield, Devon White, Brian McRae and Canyon Sturts. Visit BlueJays.com slash Baseball Academy. The Toronto Blue Jays are proud supporters of amateur baseball across Canada. Jays down to one here. And Price Top of the third will face the top of the order for the Blue Jays. He's faced nine batters and a first pitch strike to seven of the nine. And this one lifted into right center, cruising over Kiermeyer and Kiermeyer 
with the catch and one away. You know, you mentioned first pitch strikes by David Price. Uh, he is second in the American League in throwing first pitch strikes. Only Phil Hughes is better, and Phil Hughes throws a lot of fastballs. He's from Minnesota. Price is the same way. He'll challenge you early in the count. Price leads the American League in strikeouts, second in the AL in innings pitched. Has two complete games. That is third in the American League. The 2012 Cy Young Award winner looking for his 80th career victory. You know, it didn't start out like that for him this year. He got off to a very slow start. And then has turned it on. He had five consecutive double digit strikeout games in the month of June. There's a strike to Cabrera. Says he's throwing the ball as well as he has in his career. Right now, his fastball, slider, cut it, change up. That's saying something because as Cabrera fouls this one off to the right side, back on 2012, he was 20 and 5. And so you see the struggles. And since that time, he's won three straight. His last 80 is 4 and 3. Yep, four of his last five starts he has won. Last season, 10 and 8 with a 3.33 ERA and 27 starts. This is his 20th. Backdoor cutter, foul ball right off the knee, right off the top of the knee. That's a glancing blow right there by Molina. He's lucky he didn't catch that one square. Swing and a miss. That is the fourth strikeout for Price in two and two thirds. Jose Bautista, you mentioned the home runs that he has hit off of David Price. Five of them. Well, where are they? They're up in the strike zone, and three out of the five are fastballs. He knows that Price is going to challenge him with the heater. He's going to keep it up in the strike zone, and Jose hasn't missed them. Swings here and lifts it high in the air. The right side. And Loney is underneath it down to by the bullpen. And that's going to do it. A one, two, three inning for the lefty, David Price. Monday night's MLB Home Run Derby from Minneapolis, Minnesota. It's a star-studded 
field in a new format, the MLB Home Run Derby, exclusively on Sportsnet on Monday night, starting at 7.30 Eastern. Okay, I'm going to put you on the spot right now. Who's winning it? <laughs> what do you think? I'm going to put it right back on you. Right. I, I'm going to go with it. I'm going to go with uh, let's watch Bautista to make this play. I think it's going to be. Oh, Shake. Shaggy's got more no. Giancarlo Stanton. Well, I think that's where everybody is going. Well, Cespedes is in it, too. He yes, was, but I think eight. everybody's headed to Stanton. So I think you got to go maybe a little bit off of the map. And I and I think maybe how about Morneau? Wouldn't you, that be something? You like the uh, yeah, former twin, huh? Yeah, coming to back. Final answer? Morneau. All right, I'll go with Stan. Well, you and everybody else. I mean, that that's the easy one. I got first pick. I mean, well, you asked me, and I deferred. Gave me I a little bit you. of time. I, I know, I agree, chance. but I mean, Stan. Go out on a limb there, Tabby. No chance. <laughs> Joyce, right. I think it'd just be a great story. Yeah. You know, I mean, he's. It's great to see him doing what he's doing. Figure he was going to have a good season. Going to Colorado. Well, it's a good place. You got to find your groove once again, right? That's a good offensive team. They got Carlos Gonzalez back, and they got no one. Arenado back. As a team, they have a 112 home runs that leads the National League, and for the Blue Jays, they lead all of baseball. 116. They haven't hit one in this series, though. And the 2-2 is down and in to Matt Joyce, who struck out back in the first inning. How about David Price there? He gets that one-run lead, goes out there, eight pitches. Eight pitches. Coming right after against some pretty good hitters. Joyce threw the right side on the ground and into right field and a one out base hit. Now three, Saved during the plumbing, cooling, and electrical expert sale. Only at home hardware and building center locations. Homeowners helping homeowners with expert advice. Longoria is still looking for his first hit here in this series. Grounded out right back to Dickey to end the first. Joyce over at first base with a lead, and Dickey looks over and deals. You mentioned the lack of home runs by the Tampa Bay Rays this year. They have 77. They only have one player in double digits, also. And that's this guy right here, Evan Montoya, with 11. Pitch rides high. So far in this game, we have not seen Ari Dickey handling that knuckleball like he has the last couple of starts. Where he's been able to keep it in the strike zone right now. He's got good speed on it, but he just hasn't been able to control it, command it in that strike zone. Back through the middle, back to back base hits. So Longoria, his first hit of the series, he's now one for ten. And that's going to bring up Loney, who lined out. To begin the second. Another knuckleball that was up. That time to Longorio. He gets his first hit of the series. Is up and the count of one and zero. Oh. One away here in the bottom of the third. Okay. 
Dickey deals and that pitch is up once again and the count now two and oh and Loney digs in 269 with runners in scoring position 10 for 22 in this series collectively are the Rays and the strike zone is found there and it's two and one they don't have a lot of free swingers very controlled when they're up at the plate. Their swings are under control. They don't have long swings, wild swings. That's why it's tough. You, you have to be able to throw that ball with the strike zone. They're just going to take it. Looking for that double play to end the inning. The 3 1. And it's ball four. Out of the zone, and that is the second walk. As you mentioned, against the Angels, just one walk. Two starts ago on July 3rd at Oakland, he lost four to one at three. Constantly pitching ahead against the, the Angels. Different story here this afternoon. Yeah. Just nine walks over his last five starts and two here. Through the first two and a third. As Geyer hits this one off to the right side and out of play in the count. 0 and 1. And the Blue Jays. 197 now, their third. Walks given up by starters. Bases are loaded. Force out at any base for the Blue Jays in the count. 0 and 2 to Geyer. Geyer grounded out to Reyes back in the second inning. Swing and a miss. R.A. came in this game with 99 strikeouts. He struck out Zobris for his 100th of the season, then Joyce, and now Geyer. Triple digits now five years in a row. That ball was up also. Geyer, that's a wild swing right there. Long swing. I think he was thinking about trying to lift the ball into the outfield to get an RBI, but it backfires on him as he swings through that one. So two away here in the bottom of the third and Escobar with the base hit two outs got things going in the second he later scored on a single to right field off of the bat of Forsyth he gets under this one launches it high in the air coming over Cabrera right at the foul line he makes a catch and that's going to end the bottom of the third and boy R.A. Dickey gets out of that one we head to the fourth.
200 innings from David Price, 191 strikeouts, an outstanding whip with an opponent's batting average of 232, and you're going to get wins. He had 14, or excuse me, 10 last year. He spent a long time on the disabled list, 20 the year before that, 12, and then 19 in 2010. He's going to win. He's going to get the innings. He's going to take you deep into a ball game. He's a true number one, I think, in all of baseball, one of them. Will the price be right for Tampa? I think that's the big question. And it's something that they've done before, as you well know. I mean, when you think about big contracts here and what they decide to do and where they typically go, I don't know if they have a sense if Price is going to want to take a hometown discount to stay around. He's done that already on this contract, and I think he owes it to himself to find out what he's worth on the open market. I know baseball and you know, the Players Association want to see what he's worth on the open market, and that's probably doesn't mean he's going to stay here. We just don't have the, the resources to sign David Price. So at what point did you decide, all right, I got to turn this guy into three or four minor league pieces? Dan Johnson pops out for the second time. He's 0 for 2. And the, through it all, Joe Madden just steady. The, the Rays did a good job realizing that they could not keep James Shields. So they went out and they said, well, who's the minor league player of the year? Will Myers. Well, let's give Kansas City a call. And they were able to trade Price over to Kansas City. They got Will Myers. They got Jake Odorizzi. They are usually dealing from strength. Same thing happened in 2011 with Matt Garza. He's going to become a free agent. They're going to let him go. So they picked up a young pitcher in Chris Archer, who's now a mainstay in their rotation. Will Myers, the minor league player of the year. He is out right now with an injury. But I, I see the same thing happening with David Price. They're going to look around baseball and see who's got three or four really good players in the farm system. They'll scout them to determine if they can help their major league team at some point and, and he'll be traded. It could be within the next two weeks. It could be in the offseason. It could be next year. He signed through next year. Kratz is the batter down at the count. 0 oh and 2 and that pitch is outside. I, I guess the theory is that you're going to get more for him now than maybe a year from now. And then it's also interesting to note, and we mentioned this yesterday, of the 25 players on the 25-man roster, just six drafted by the Rays. But as you pointed out, they utilize what they have as this one is laced foul down the left field line. And they typically sell at the right time, and they bring players in, and you take a look at the 25-man roster, and the majority of them do spend time within the race system. Yep. Yeah, they do a really good job of recognizing players in other organizations who would be a fit on their team. James Loney at first base was a great pickup. Last season, Ben Zobers, they got him from Houston. Kratz in the air and Kiermeyer, one of those six players. They have lost some really good players over the years here. BJ Upton was a very good player in center field for him. He was a free agent, signed a five-year 75 with Atlanta. Carl Crawford was a good player here. He ended up signing with Boston. He now plays with Los Angeles. We mentioned Shields, Garza. I mean, they've had some good players come through here. They just can't keep them all. Price, there's that first pitch strike. Well, there's certainly a lot of conversation too that if they are going to deal them, they don't want to deal them in their own division. And certainly there's a lot of conversation early on about, you know, not only Toronto, but other teams within the division going after them. And if you're Tampa, typically you try to avoid that. Yeah. You don't want to have to face this guy yeah, by four five you. times a year. And then you also hear it from your fans too when he returns home to pitch against you. Tollison in the air. And it's going to be another one, two, three inning as Kiermaier settles underneath it. 
He's retired seven in a row after the Francisco base hit back in the second. has broken out in New York City. This is not just another vampire show. It's Guillermo del Toro. This is The Strain. Premieres exclusively on FX Canada tonight. 10 Eastern Time, 8 Mountain. Not available on Bell. Here on this Sunday, bottom half of the fourth inning, Jose Molina, Logan Forsythe, and Kevin Kiermeyer. Eight, nine, and one if anybody gets on Ben Zobrist. In the third, Dickey was able to get out of a jam. Bases loaded jam. Bases loaded with just one out. He struck out Geyer and then he got Escobar. That's three straight innings that he has left runners on base. Six left on now through three innings. He's pulling that knuckleball. It almost looks like a slider, doesn't it? Going away from the right handers. Molina evens the count at two and two. Playing in replace of Ryan Hennigan, who has been out, and we haven't seen him in this series. With a strain. Strike out. Disney's planes, fire and rescue. Dusty's back in an all-new adventure, landing in theaters in 3D Friday. Speaking of the strain, the strain on his side. He was scratched from the starting lineup on a Friday with soreness in that left side. As Forsyth. Takes a look at the pitch. Forsyth didn't play yesterday, but he snapped an 0 for 13 skid on Friday against Toronto. 2 for 4 with a double and a run scored. Drove him his first run against the Blue Jays last time up, second inning. And Dickey working quickly delivers a strike there, three and one with a one out here in the bottom of the fourth inning. And a strike once again. How about that for being patient at the plate? Three and one, you got a fastball. Normally guys are up there swinging away three and one when they finally get a fastball but it takes it. Gonna make R.A. throw another one. And he 
drives this one into center field and Mastriani is right there and he'll make the catch. So two down here and we go back to the top of the order and Kevin Kiermaier. Kiermaier with two outs. He walked back in inning number one and then he grounded out to end the second. Francisco moves in onto the turf at third in the first pitch. Down and in in the count of one and zero. Oh. And there's a strike. In the count of one and one, the right-hander from Nashville, Tennessee. A little Middle Tennessee battle between Price and. Dickey grounded on the right side and Tollison fires over to first base in a one two three inning for R.A. Dickey. It's time now for a Blue Jay Central update. Here's Jamie Campbell and Greg Zahn guys. Brought to you by Transitions Adaptive Lenses. Transitions Lenses automatically filter just the right amount of light. Experience life well lit. Today we're going to look at Kevin Kiermeyer, age 24. He's born in Fort Wayne, Indiana. 31st round draft pick of the 2010 amateur draft by the Tampa Bay Rays. That's the 941st player picked in 2010. The fourth lowest pick in team history to make it to the major leagues with the Rays. He was called up last year to the major leagues for the first time to play in the tiebreaker game, game number 163, if you remember that, in Texas. He also played in the AL wildcard game in Cleveland. 15 triples last season, fourth most in the minor leagues. He can run. Mastriani is the batter, and the pitch is outside, and a rare first pitch that is not a strike, and the first pitch strikes to 12 of 15 batters. That he has faced. Kiermeyer from Fort Wayne, Indiana, had an opportunity to not only play baseball collegiately, but also football. Decided on baseball, went to Parkland College in Champaign, Illinois. Was an All American there. They won the junior college title his freshman year. Was drafted in the 31st round, as you noted, as this one squibs off to the right side. And Turned out an offer to go to Purdue University in West Lafayette, Indiana, to sign with the Rays. And he has moved swiftly through their system. He has a brother who's playing football, NAIA football, middle linebacker, so athleticism in that family. One ball, one strike. Mastriani to begin things here. And 
and the one two from Price. And the count now two and two. Here in the top half of the fifth inning one nothing. Rays Rays got their run at the bottom of the second inning. Four time all star. Will not pitch obviously. On Tuesday night because he's getting the start here. Pushed back under the weather. The a little bit of a virus. On Thursday thought he was going to feel better Friday that wasn't the case went home wasn't here for the ball game and some question yesterday as to whether or not he would go here this afternoon and the pitch up and in yeah, and how about all the rumors that were going around the ballpark when they said they were going to skip his start and move his start from Saturday they were swirling he's replaced by Fernando Rodney who's an X ray. Of course, now the Mariners closer. Mastro fouls this one off to the right side. He just can't seem to put away Mastriani. It's going to be the eighth pitch of this at bat to the leadoff hitter here in the fifth inning. Very deliberate when he is out on that mound, making sure everything is just right before he. Delivers that pitch. In the air to right field, and Zobrist is underneath it. He calls off Kiermeyer. And let's send it to Jamie Campbell for an update. Jamie. Houston 40 and 55. They're 18 and a half games back of the Oakland A's in the American League West. And at home, they're six games under 500. Francisco got a base hit last time up. And that was the last time that a Jay reached base back in the second inning. One away here in the fifth. And Price up and in. And did it get him? It did. So Francisco on that fastball up and in gets hit and he's going to head to first base. Trying to push him off the plate you could say set up inside. He turns right into that ball. Starts to swing he just cannot pull out of the way it looks like it got him right in the wrist. In the right hand. See him moving his hand around there, trying to get some feeling back into his right hand. Runner over at first is Francisco. Totally struck out back in the second inning to end the second. The only threat thus far today against Price happened in the first with one away, a walk, and then a base hit. Runners at the corners. With just one out, and Johnson popped out right back to Price, and then Kratz flew out to left field, and that left Cabrera at third and Bautista at first. Other than that, opportunities few and far between against Price as he rocks and deals, and the pitch misses. Got to get some base runners against him. He's just so tough to try and do that. Uh, he doesn't walk anybody. He's around the plate 163 strikeouts now on the season leads in major leagues. Steven Strasburg leads the National League as that pitch is outside. His strikeout total heading into the all star break. Is the highest in 12 years by any pitcher back in 2002. Diamond back teammates Kurt Schilling and Randy Johnson each headed into the break with 186 and 171 strikeouts. And it's the highest total by an American League pitcher in 15 years as this one is right back at Price to second out on to first. Got it. Double play ends the inning. Home half of the fifth coming up.
Oilers cover every angle of the Toronto Blue Jays. Follow Shai Davidi taking you beyond the bases with in-depth analysis and expert opinion. It's the inside scoop. Shai Davidi, MLB insider, only on Sportsnet.ca. And faltering Blue Jays fail to execute once again. Written by Mike Milner. That is up there right now in an opportunity lost yesterday. With Price obviously being moved back to today and the Jays losing the game 10 3. Dickey will see Zobris, Joyce, and Longoria. Zobris is 0 for 2, struck out of the first. And he flew to right in the third. R.A. with the 0-1 hit high in the air to center field. Mastro waiting on it. And there is one down. See during the plumbing, cooling, and electrical expert sale. Only at home hardware and building center locations. Homeowners helping homeowners with expert advice. Joyce is one for two, struck out in the first single, then was stranded at third in the third when Dickey got out of that bases loaded jam. Hasn't had a much success against R.A. He is six for 29, lifetime against him. Francisco, where the catch is going to be now six for 30. Two away here in the fifth. And Longoria is going to stride up to the plate. Got a base hit last time up, Tabby. Really struggled as of late. And you just kind of wonder him. 257, 11 homers, 43 RBIs. He's been so productive throughout his career. He's so good. I think it's just a matter of time before he gets hot. We had a shot of him uh, when we first got here on Friday, taking some extra batting practice, working with Derek Shell, trying to stay in the middle of the field. It felt like he was opening up just a little bit too much or a little bit too quickly. And they were trying to stay in the middle of the field. He has come up with some big base hits in this franchise history. 32 home runs last season. There's a meeting out there in center field and taking it is Tolleson. And that's going to do it. A one, two, three for Dickey. Nice. Ray is swinging. Mastro swinging. 
is tying him up. Yeah, he's got a good combination of his fastball. He's cutting it. He's putting out his spot. I mean, this is a typical David Price type of yep. start for him. Five innings, just two hits, a walk, and four strikeouts for Price. And Blue Jays last in the American League, batting average versus left-handed pitchers. So they've already had problems against left-handers. Now they're going up against one of the best in the American League. So they got to really dig in right now. All right, Dickey has really done a great job since getting in that jam in the third. Got out of it. And he's retired eight in a row since that walk to Loney. A one, two, three, fourth, and a one, two, three, fifth, and just six pitches in the bottom of the fifth inning, which is something you really like to see. As this one is sliced into right field, and Reyes is aboard. Reyes, Cabrera, Bautista. If anybody gets on Dan J Johnson here at the top of inning number six, Jose has been swinging the hot bat on this road trip for the Blue Jays. That's another one to get it started here in the sixth inning. One for three on the day is Reyes. Has a nine game hit streak. He'll carry that into the All Star break. 15 hits over the nine games and 39 at bats. Cabrera was aboard in the first by a walk and then was stranded at third base after Bautista singled him. Over to third as they check on Reyes. And Reyes is back, so runners at first and third back in inning number one. And then Johnson popped out and Kratz flew out. Step off move. And yeah, that one is close at first base. They're taking a look in the dugout for the Rays. That's why Price stepped off just to make sure they got the replay, but he's safe. Reyes, we were talking about the hit 15 hits now on this yeah. road trip. Yeah. Doing his part offensively as he's chased back to first base. Outfield straight away for Cabrera. Loney holds on to Reyes. Price out of the stretch, looks in. Molina with the signs. Inching out. Is Reyes Price checks on him to the plate. It's so tough to read for Reyes. You saw as Price lifted that right foot, he was already making his move back to the bag. And the count two and zero, oh, but just the presence of Reyes over there and Price paying some mind to him has given Cabrera a hitter's count. Yeah, you better not pay too close attention, or you're going to make a mistake. Cabrera with 116 hits. He's just two for 10, though, in this series. He's tied for fifth all time for most hits by a Blue Jay before the All Star break. Vernon Wells, 2003, had 121. And that one. Just off the outside, 3 0. Oh. He is tied with Carlos Delgado at 116 in 2000. And then Molly, Paul Molitor back in 1994. He's had a great first half. He has hit everything. Played every game but one so far this season. And the pitch is a strike there. It's 3 and 1. Lead off batter aboard in Reyes. One nothing game. Bautista getting loose. If your leg feels good right now, you got to start that runner at first base. Try to make something happen against Price. And Price knows it, so he tosses it back over there.
ground ball. Foresight to second out on to first double play. 463. Foresight Escobar Loney. Escobar has such a strong arm at shortstop. Just get him the ball, let him do the rest. Taylor made right here, right to the right of the second baseman. Watch Escobar, quick feet, tap the bag, and then throw a seat over to first base to finish it off. We saw that when he was with the Blue Jays, how important that strong arm is. Bautista looks at a pitch. Price has given up 19 home runs. We were talking about the Jays leading the way with 116 in the majors. The last time that Bautista hit one was against Milwaukee as he tried to tie it up there. July 2nd, 11 days ago. Yeah, he came off uh, the time that he out. He missed a couple of games with that hamstring problem. Comes back, homers his first day in the first inning. Next day against Milwaukee, he homers in his first at bat in the first inning. Now trying to find it again. That backswing from Jose looked like he clopped, clocked him. Watch the backswing. Swings through it. No, well, it, it, it was just the ball that hurt him. Looking at that glove, and sometimes that'll happen where it just can snap back your thumb. The 1 1. And the count now one ball and two strikes. Two pits. Bautista high in the air, right field. Zobris weighs off Kiermeyer. And Jose is one for three. We go to the bottom of inning number six. Rays lead one nothing. Party Friday, July 18th, Blue Jays against the Rangers. 707 first pitch. Come down to the Rogers Center early. Check out the pregame festivities happening outside Gate 10. Win great prizes. Enjoy the live music in a licensed area. Gates open at 4:30. Call 416-341-1234 or check it out on BlueJays.com. Loney the batter. Dickey is retired eight in a row. Had six pitches there in the fifth. So he's starting to find the groove. And the 2-0 is in there for a strike. 
Knuckle ball 2 and 0. Loney's the last guy to reach base against Dare. And that was a walk to load the bases. Strike two. Just low. Three balls, two strikes. Dickey. And it is fouled off. Loney. Just 192. Lifetime against RA. Five hits. Six walks now, and he has struck out five times in 26 plate appearances. And that one flutters outside. And it's the third walk. And that ends a streak of eight in a row since Loney walked. And a leadoff walk here. I think they're going to try and get that runner in scoring position. One run game. Geyer did not have a very good at bat the last time they faced. R.A. Dickey struck out. Took a long look down at Tom Foley, the third base coach. Tries to lay down the bunt. Francisco drops it. Francisco scoops it up, fires to second. And they get the force out there. Scary moment there for the Blue Jays. Francisco thought he had it, and as he was kind of glancing over at first base, he loses it. Got a little ahead yeah. of himself right there. Took his eye off that ball. They did try to bunt. They gave him the bunt for a base hit, but he pops it up and, and won just a little bit too quickly. But he presence of mind, pick the ball up, get the out over at second base, a fielder's choice. So the whole thing was... They basically exchanged the runners, put a faster runner at first base. Well, Loney unable to get down to second base if there was a faster runner over at first base. You know, then Francisco would have really have had to hurry once he dropped it, but he knew that he had a little bit of time there before he was able to collect himself and fire to Reyes at second base. Escobar is the batter. He has scored the only run in this game. That was in the second after two outs. He got a base hit into right field. Molina was hit by a pitch. He went to second. And then the number nine hitter, Logan Forsyth, with a base hit through the right side. And Escobar scored. Matt Devlin, Pat Tabler here on this. Half of the season, and can they do something that they haven't done here since 2007? They're down to one nothing here in the bottom of the sixth inning as Dickey deals to the plate, and the pitch is called a strike. Haven't won a series at the Trop since 2007, April of that year. Yeah, a win today. There'd be a lot of things happening. All right, Dickey would even his record at eight and eight. Blue Jays would win the series. They win their 50th game for the first time before the All-Star break since 1992. Ground ball left side. Reyes over the second out on to first. Not in time. Save during the plumbing, cooling, and electrical expert sale. Only at home hardware and building center locations. Homeowners helping homeowners with expert advice. It also even up their road record at 25 and 25. And it would be their first series victory on the road since a three-game sweep of Detroit back in early June. But down one nothing here. Runner at first base. And two outs. And Molina is the hitter. Struck out in the fourth hit by a pitch in his first plate appearance. 0 for 1. 
hitting 190. Dickey from the stretch. Escobar at first. He's running. Totally fires out the second. Not in time. The throw a little bit on the shortstop side of the bag, and Tomlinson had a backhand and then sweep it around to try to catch Escobar. Yeah, if it's a better throw, he's out at, at second base. Trying to make something happen here. This is Escobar's second attempt of the season of a stolen base and his first successful stolen base, and that's why he's all excited getting into scoring position. It's another thing. The Rays have only stolen 34 bases now. Fused in club history before the All-Star break. Molina looks at a strike. 79 miles an hour. Two outs. One and two the count. Escobar at second. Inside out swing. And the count remains one and two. Shoots it the other way. Escobar rounds third. The throw to the plate by Bautista. The tag. Got him at the plate. Got him at the plate. Bautista fires it in from right field. Escobar is saying he's safe, so you know what's going to happen. Yeah, they're going to get on the phone right away. That's Dave Martinez. You see him in the background there. And he's going to give the signal. And the signal was he was out, so let's play on. They are going to challenge this one. Play is under review, and Bautista with a big time throw here. Escobar. No, no need to hit the cutoff man on that play right there. Overthrow him, and I think they're going to have an argument here. Totally. Safe. Yeah, it looks like yep. that, that run is call gonna, is going to be overturned. They, they are going to play on. That, that's going to be a, a safe call. Molina had only had five hits all years with runner in scoring position, but he got a knuckleball that was up, and he hit it to the right guy. He hit it to Jose Bautista, who charged. And again, you don't use the cutoff man there. You throw that ball all the way to the plate if you can, which he did. But there was a nice little lane for Escobar to slide to, and it looked like he's going to be safe. The play is under review. Let's see here. The left foot, does it cross there? It certainly appears as though it beats the tag of Tolia as he was able to get it down and sweep it across. But Escobar, you see his reaction saying, no way, and then Right after that, he's pointing <laughs> emphatically yeah. saying, hey, I was safe. And so it's under review. Manager has to get out there before the field. The team leaves the field for the third out. Joe Madden got out there. He got the call from Dave Martinez to go ahead and challenge that play. And now they've got their answer. Safe. So, so Molina comes through. And the stolen base pays off. Stolen base by Escobar. They challenge the play at the plate. Escobar scores. Molina picks up his fifth RBI of the season. And being aggressive with Escobar, getting him into scoring position, was a good move. Escobar, you see him there. You see, I told you. Let's review it. Congratulations all around to Yanel Escobar, still second and then scored on that big right field. And Bautista with a throw to the plate. It was 
So close under review and overturned. And Forsyth is the batter, and so can R.A. get himself out of this here with two outs in the bottom of the sixth inning. And there's a strike. Had to wait around just a little bit as that play was under review. But able to get that first one in there for a strike. Forsyth is one for two. And you it's know, baseball is a game of inches, and you got to do the little things to help your team. Watch the secondary lead that Escobar gets. He is out there, and now he takes off on the crack of the bat. Two outs. That secondary lead helped him get his momentum going towards home plate, and he just barely beat the throw. Molina coming through. What more could you ask for? A 192 hitter coming into today. And then you add the stolen base. Yep, it's 2 nothing. I'm safe. <laughs> Swing and a miss. And a great job by Dickey just coming right back, focusing in and striking out Forsyth, but not before a play at the plate is overturned. Escobar safe. of Rogers Blue Jays baseball partnership and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form in the accounts and descriptions of this game and not be disseminated without the express written consent of Rogers Blue Jays baseball partnership. Looks like R.A. Dickey's afternoon is over. Red Cecil is still warming up in the bullpen. He got the pat on the shoulder. In between innings there by the manager John Gibbons up over 100 pitches you know Escobar with the stolen base and the run scored. And there is the visit from Pete Walker. John Gibbons will come down later on and pat him on the shoulder so his first half might be done. Working six innings allowing two runs five hits. And seven runners left out of base for the Rays and Escobar. Initially called safe at the plate and then after review out was the initial call and then safe with the second. And after looking over it and it's now two nothing. And Johnson not having success against his former teammate here in Tampa. David Price opened up the season against the Blue Jays and he pitched well. He made one mistake though, and that was to Eric Kratz. Kratz, he was pinch hitting first pitch fastball. He drills this one to center field. Desmond Jennings runs out of room, his first home run of the season. And 
that got the, the score at that time. Six to two. They will go on to win that game nine to two. Grazzi pinch hit for Josh Tolley and homered in the eighth inning. Kratz. 0 for 2. Price. And high in the air. Longoria calling for it. Looking up and he's able to handle it. And there are two down now here in the top half of the seventh Number inning. That's going to bring up Tollison. Tollison 0 for 2. Price has really only been threatened once today as he just fires one in there. And that was back in the first inning. Runners at the corners, one out. Blue Jays got a runner to third base. That's the last time they've gotten a runner to third base. And the only time that they've had a runner in scoring position. And it's a foul ball. Tallis in the numbers 259, three home runs and 12 RBIs. It's been a tough road trip for. The Blue Jays. And they've struggled out on the road. They've dropped 10 of 14 overall and 13 of their last 20 on the road. And so for them, after the break starting at home is going to be nice for John Gibbons. 25 and 21 at home. And they get something going. In the late innings against Price, that is awful tough and pretty good idea right yeah. there to back Steve Tollison off the plate on that high fastball. He'll backdoor that cutter against the right-handers at times. This might be one of them right here. Time called. Tollison awaits. Set up outside, and the pitch is down low and away. We're mentioning earlier about how Price has just been so electric with the strikeouts, and the highest total by an American League pitcher in 15 years since Pedro Martinez of the Red Sox back in 1999 at the All Star break. He had 184 strikeouts. He's leading the way, isn't he? Yep. Here's a 3 2. Got another one right there, Tabby. His fifth strikeout in a 1 2 3 inning in the top of the seventh. 2 0 Tampa Bay. Tomlinson goes down swinging. We head to the home half of the seventh.
Brett Cecil is on for R.A. Dickey. He works six innings, five hits, a pair of runs, both earned three walks and five strikeouts. So the left-hander is on for the Blue Jays. Here are the numbers for Brett Cecil in 36 games this year. Spent some time on the disabled list with the groin strain, but still picked up a hold in his last time out. That was a couple of days ago, and that hold was his 15th, which ranks third in the American League in holds, pitching in front of Casey Jansen. Averaging 11 strikeouts per nine innings. Left-handers hitting 280 against Brett. He's got a great breaking ball that he can throw at any time, and his fastball's got some movement on it. Cecil coming in now facing these three batters. Two of them are left-handed here to start the seventh inning. Kiermaier, Zobrist, and Joyce. Kiermaier, left-handed bat, and Joyce, a left-handed bat. The Toronto bullpen in this series, Tabby, seven earned runs in six and two-third innings. And so Cecil's going to try to keep it close. Top half of the eighth, it would be Mastriano. Mastriani, pardon me, Francisco and Tolley. As that pitch misses down low and away. One and one the count, and Cecil deals, and this one is lined into left field and a big turn by Kiermeyer. Just goes the other way. Ray has had him shaded up the middle. And a good piece of hitting here by the youngster. Stay right on that breaking ball. It's the first time that he has faced Brett Cecil, first base hit. Just lines it into left field to get it started. Zobrist is the batter. Kiermaier over at first base here in the bottom of the seventh. And the pitch just outside. Right-hander down in the bullpen for the Blue Jays, and there's a strike. Todd Redmond warming up for Toronto. That is all about Evan Longoria right there. Got to shut these runs off and give your offense a chance. You're getting late. John Gibbons thinking a couple batters from now. And talking to John Gibbons, and he mentioned how Jay Happ would be available yesterday, and then today Marcus Stroman. And Jay Happ yesterday worked two thirds of an inning, three hits, two runs, both earned. And Marcus is in the bullpen. We have that shot yeah. of him right there, just in case they need. Him. Arms down in the bullpen, the last game before the four-day break. Back in action Friday night at home against Texas and the pitch down and in. That was a pretty good looking pitch right there. Play is right at the bottom of the strike zone. It's over is taking all the way. We'll see how John Gibbons decides to line things up there after the break as well. Kiermaier over at first base, Zobris. 0 for 3. And there's a pitch that just misses. And runners at first and second down. I'll disagree with you. <laughs> I thought he had four 
four pitches within that strike zone. But he did not get the call and now he's got to deal with a pinch hitter. Bullpen walks and we mentioned earlier about the starting pitchers and it's carried over to the pen as well. So Rodriguez who hit a home run to tie things up on Friday night against Dustin McGowan will hit for Joyce runners at first and second base and Yesterday, Cole Figueroa, rookie, hit for Sean Rodriguez in the sixth inning, and that really opened things up. The bases were loaded, and Figueroa ended up working the count, and he eventually walked. Runners at first and second. That was big because they're playing basically short on the bench. They've got a couple of players that Joe Maddox says they could used in an emergency if they had to so they have four guys on the bench two of them are down they pinched hit one of them yesterday came up with a bases loaded walk Rodriguez and Figueroa are really the only healthy guys on their bench this afternoon and they go to Rodriguez because Joyce 0 for 6 lifetime against Brett Cecil and that one looks good yeah. look at Cecil's yeah. response he, where I don't blame him. Ask him and Tolly's talking to him I don't blame him yeah, John Gibbons now kind of walking around a little bit. And he's asking, Sean, where are those pitches? I mean, that that looks pretty darn good right there. I mean, what else do you want? He threw a couple pitches again to Ben Zobers that he thought was a strike. And then a couple of pitches here to Rodriguez that he takes. And he's behind again. He's called a good game. Sean Barber's called a good game behind the dish so far this afternoon. He did miss the play at the plate. It was under review and overturned. Look at pitch tracks right yeah. here. Three balls in the strike zone, and it's two and one. Two balls and one strike here in the home half of the seventh inning. Nobody out. Cecil comes set. And a swing and a miss, and that pitch location was pretty much right where that last one that was called the ball was located. And this one, Rodriguez, swings right through. Swing and a miss, and he strikes him out. One away. And John Gibbons is going to head out of the dugout and go to the bullpen with the right handed bat of Longoria coming up. So Cecil Didn't is get out the after a third. Didn't get the borderline pitches that he needed to. And he'll walk off, but I, I thought he was throwing the ball really well. He came up with a strikeout versus Rodriguez. Now it's up to Todd Redmond to, to finish off this inning. 2 nothing raised here in the bottom of the seventh inning.
Cycling, the Tour de France, the crown jewel in Sportsnet Summer of Cycling. Coverage continues tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. Eastern on five Sportsnet channels. Todd Redman on the hill here. And Redman worked an inning yesterday. Worked the bottom of the eighth inning. He struck out Loney Geyer walked and then he got a double play ball off of the bat of Escobar. Just three earned runs over his last 22 and a third innings. Piss Redman comes right after you with the fastball. His job right here is to get Longoria. Now in his career, Longoria has faced him four times, and he's reached him for three hits, three for four, including a home run. And first pitch swinging. Longoria just one hit in the series. He's one for three. Longoria and All Stars first three years in the big leagues. And the pitch is high. His second season in the bigs, he had 33 home runs. He has hit 31 or more three times, including hitting 32 last season. Runners at first and second, and Redmond backs off of the rubber and looks around. The right hander from right here in St. Petersburg, Florida, looks in. Double play depth through the middle. And the runners are moving. Tolly fires to third. And it takes away the double play. That's why they were trying to keep him close, but he's got such acceleration. Kiermeyer at second base. Tollison's right on there. As soon as Redmond goes home, no chance for Josh Tolley to throw him out. That acceleration gets him to third base with less than two outs. The infield now has to come in. Two big runs out there. Blue Jays got a save. Two nothing here in the bottom of the seventh inning. They have a way of making those innings, just keeping the pressure on the opposition. The Rays do. Yesterday it was a six run sixth inning where the Blue Jays threw 55 pitches. They batted around Longoria chases it shakes his head. You know he's trying to. Do something there frustrated with himself. You know what's interesting about their attack if you will the Rays. They don't hit many home runs. They just keep the inning alive with good at bat after good at bat grinding out at bats and. Having productive plate appearances. Redmond tries it once again down low and away. After the All Star break for the Rays, they head on the road. They actually begin it in Minnesota. And then a two gamer in St. Louis before returning home to face Boston and then Milwaukee. The 3 2 pitch in the air to center field. Astros underneath it makes the catch, the double steal, and Kiermeyer is going to score. And it's 3 0 now. Longoria does the job with the sack fly RBI, and Zobris moves over to third base. As a hitter, when you see those speedy guys getting himself into scoring position or the third base with less than two outs that just makes you a better hitter and Longoria he was going to drive that run in. he was going to figure out a way to get the ball into the outfield to score that run good productive at bat that's Derek Shelton the hitting coach that's what he preaches so two away here and a runner Zobrist over at third base three nothing Tampa Bay Redmond Faces Loney. And a strike.
Strike two. Loney, 0 for 1. He's walked twice. That was against Dickey. In on the hands. And to left field. There's Cabrera. And Cabrera able to catch the third out here in the bottom of the seventh inning through seven innings. Tampa Bay Rays lead 3-0 over the Jays. with Kevin Barker and Joe Siddle. John Gibbons joins every Thursday. Baseball Central at noon. Weekdays on Sportsnet 590. The Fan. Always a great listen. And so here is Price. Price will face Seven, eight, nine in the lineup for the Jays. And the first pitch is a strike. Mastriani struck out in the second. And he flew out to right field in the fifth. Got the start today in center field. And that pitch outside. Two complete games for Price this season. And that is third in the American League. The left hander with the one one pitch. And there's a strike. You know we talk about him being a workhorse and you're talking about complete games over the last year. He has had six complete games. Only the Yankees Reds and Dodgers the only teams that were more in the next span. I mean, he, he pitches and just keeps going. Complete game as this one is grounded to Longoria. Spins around, fires to first in time. Well, this script is about playing out the way it has been all season long for David Price. First inning, he's got a, an ERA of about six and a half, but then after that, he shuts it down after three. He gets stronger as the game goes with goes along he finds that release point and starts pounding that strike zone. He has had five straight innings where he's faced no more than the minimum three batters per inning. His first complete game was against Minnesota in April. And then he had one in May May 13th in Seattle. And the pitch just misses. He has worked seven and a third here. Juan Francisco has been aboard twice a base hit and a hit batter one of the three hits for 
the Jays on this day. You know, it's so interesting too. You, you think about you know the youngsters that we've seen the last two games starting for Tampa Bay and Odorizzi obviously yesterday and then Archer on Friday fouled off. And a lot of conversation about Archer and they're trying to pick up his pace. And you look at the tempo of David Price and it's just perfect. Keeps everybody in the game. And the key to that is he gets that first pitch strike in there. Yeah. 71 percent of the time. Second best in the American League. Just to throw strikes. You have to be on your toe. Francisco <laughs> with a hot smash. And Forsythe unable to backhand it. And he's aboard all three times. It's very much like Mark Burley. Doesn't wait around. Just here it is. Here it is. Now the stuff is completely different. Yeah. Yeah, different type of pitcher. Yeah, completely different type of pitcher. How about Juan Francisco right there? Facing one of the toughest left handers in the American League. He hasn't struck out. He's been on base all three times, and that's going to be called a hit right there. Two for two. Deanna Navarro will hit for Tolly. With R.A. Dickey out of the game. Navarro awaits and he swings at the first pitch and he fouls it back. Navarro waiting on that World Cup finale. Argentina and Germany. A huge soccer fan. Seen wearing his messy jersey. The 0 1 fouled off to the right side. And the count 0 2. And we'll see if Price will go out there in the in the ninth as Jake McGee, who's been on paternity leave, is back. The left hander. The 0 2. And that pitch just misses. Backdoor cutter. Again, Price has worked at least eight innings six times in his last nine starts. And you can push him. He's not going to be around that 100 pitch limit. His season high this year is 120. That was three starts ago against Pittsburgh when he pitched into the ninth inning. He also had 11 strikeouts that day. That'll, that'll make the pitch count go up. The one two on the ground backhanded by Escobar tries to go the short way scooped up got him. Fielder's choice and Navarro is aboard at first base. What a nice play by Escobar that's where that arm comes in handy again going away from second he just flicks that ball over and picked by Forsythe. And you know David Price loves that. Get it out. <laughs> you don't have to necessarily turn two, but get yeah, it out on a grounder. A nice backhanded play. Three nothing Rays. Runner over at first base. Jays have had just one runner today in scoring position, and that was back in the first inning. Cabrera walked and then a single off the bat of Bautista. And he moved on to third. However, with one out, runners at the corners, Johnson popped out back to Price and then Kratz flew out to left field. Reyes, nine game hit streak. He's one for three. Navarro over at first base. And a fastball. And just misses a little bit high in the count of one and one. 106 pitches for the left hander. His highest this season, 120. And then follow that up with 119. This guy gets stronger, I think, as the game goes along. And that pitch right there on the inside edge at the knees, and it's one and two.
Right-handed hitters are hitting just 243 against him. Lefties 250. Outfield straight away. Navarro over at first base. Reyes awaits a 1-2-2 two, two out pitch. Price deals and Reyes does an excellent job of staying alive as he gets it off to the right side. Just has that ability to put that fastball where he wants to. Throws hard. You can see he really dominates third time through the lineup. Just a 215 batting average, and that shows how he, he gets stronger as the game wears on. He has that ability to just pump that fastball in there. It's down and in. Lena is able to track it down and Navarro not going anywhere. Not many have that ability to get stronger as the game goes along. Well, he's got a great delivery, first of all. He's six foot six. He's got long arms and a, and a loose arm. And he's got a great delivery. It's very simple, not a lot of moving parts. And he just continually stays back over that rubber and continually throws. Pitch out of the same arm slot. He's got great fundamentals on the mound. On the ground, Longoria over to second base, and that's going to end the top of the eighth inning. Now it's time for a Blue Jay Central update. Here's Jamie Campbell and Greg Zahn, guys. Best-selling car 16 years in a row and the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. Well, the foresight came into this game a 263 hitter against the Blue Jays hadn't driven in a run. Well, this is going to be his first RBI against the Blue Jays. He cashes in, you know, Escobar from second base. The game's first run going the other way with that base hit, the drive of the game. In the second inning by Logan Forsythe. And right now, that's all David Price has needed. Up until this point. Casey Jansen is in for. The Blue Jays Todd Redmond two thirds of an inning. No hits. No runs. No walks. No strikeouts. Making his 23rd appearance. And an ERA of 1.29. Geyer then Escobar and Molina. It's been this part of the lineup, but in fact, really after Guy or Escobar has scored two of the three runs for the Rays. And Jansen deals, and the pitch is fouled off. Second time that Casey has pitched in this series. Casey picked up the save on Friday night.
0 oh and 2 the count. There was his 14th of the season. First batter he faced. Brandon Geyer. 1 2 3 ninth inning. Pick up that 14th save. Getting a chance now to get some work before the four day break. Jays won on Friday night 8 5. Aaron Lou picked up the victory. Breaking ball down low. Bow for the loss. He has certainly been criticized around here in Tampa for his lack of performance. And then yesterday it was 10 3 Rays. They batted around in the sixth inning. On the ground. Charging Francisco over the first got him stretched by Johnson and Your attention Geyer is out 5 3. Navarro is behind the plate. He was a pinch hitter for Tolly and with R.A. Dickey out. Navarro is in. Escobar. Base hit and he scored in the second. Uh, fielder's choice stole second base and then Molina with a base hit through the right side Justin! scored. He was originally called out. The play was under review and it was overturned. Two nothing at that time and then in the seventh Justin! the Rays played it one more. He was really happy about that call too because he called Joe Madden out and said you got to yeah. you got to take a look at that one and once it was reversed Jose Bautista thought he had his ninth outfield assist of the season. It was reversed and Escobar said I could be the umpire too. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> he was emphatic. He had the signal safe pointing. Jansen. Shrugs his shoulders. You know, has done a good job this year. Just off the disabled list with a sore shoulder. Joe Madden loves his bat. Loves that bat in that lineup. Another thing he's he hasn't done this year, he hasn't struck out that much. He's gone 64 straight plate appearances now without a strikeout, which is his best in his career. Just nine off the Tampa Bay record for consecutive plate appearances without a strikeout. Two and two the count. Escobar awaits Jansen. Oof. That was nasty. The first half of the Major League Baseball season is in the books. Sportsnet, the home of MLB in Canada, takes a look back at all the highlights and amazing moments with our top 100 plays of the year Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern on four Sportsnet channels. Streak's over. You jinxed him. That's why I said it. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I don't believe in that. That's true. <laughs> Underneath it, and it is a one, two, three. A one, two, three inning in the bottom of the eighth. What will the ninth hold in store for the Jays?
Price this afternoon has been, well, David Price. Uh, eight innings again, four hits, no runs, a walk, and five strikeouts. That's uh, eight innings seven times now in his last ten starts. He has just pounded that strike zone. A little shaky in the first inning, but he's getting stronger as the afternoon went along. Cabrera Bautista and Dan Johnson here in the ninth. If anybody gets on Kratz. Left hander still warming up in the bullpen. David Price continues his dominance against the Blue Jays. 14 and 2 in his career with a 2.45 ERA. And a shutout going here today. And just four hits. And only one runner has reached scoring position, and that was Cabrera, and that was a few hours ago. Ground ball, base hit back through the middle, and so Cabrera with a base hit. That's 117. So Cabrera with a base hit back through the middle, and Joe Madden's going to come out, and that's going to do it. For David Bryce. Bryce works eight plus innings. Struck out five. And a nice ovation for the four time All Star here. And the Tampa Bay Rays. What happens with David Bryce? That's going through the minds of a lot of fans that are here. Does he remain in a Ray uniform? And there's still a couple of weeks left. He's Rogers customers get to watch the Blue Jays on Sportsnet live on your smartphone. Visit RogersAnyPlaceTV.com slash sports to get started. Jake McGee, his 45th appearance this season, Tabby. He is now the closer for the Tampa Bay Rays. 3-0 with a 156 earn run averaging over a strikeout an inning. 40 of his 44 appearances this season have been scoreless. It seems like he has found it when he was a young pitcher. He would walk people. He wouldn't. He wasn't able to throw the ball where he needs to. Now that good fastball, and it's an upper 90s fastball, sharp breaking ball, seems to be putting it all together now. Bautista swings and misses. Jake McGee just off of the paternity list. He and his wife, Morgan. Celebrated the birth of Rowan Beth McGee this past Thursday. Congratulations to them. And a check swing. 0 oh 2 now the count. We can really light up that that scoreboard. Miles per hour. David Price went in, got his jacket. Back out in the dugout to 
Jiro McGee see if he can finish this one off. Cabrera's at first. Colby Rasmus is on deck for Dan Johnson. He is three for six against McGee and also has the ability to drive the ball out of the ballpark. Bautista high in the air, giving Chase Forsyth and foul ground one away. So here comes Colby. Your attention, please. Beijing, right now, Blue Jays give base runners. Three for six in his career with a home run against Jake McGee. They need someone to get on base. They do not have a right handed batter left on their bench. So Rasmus has faced McGee. Strike. Jays took the first game of this series. They lost the second. And they're down to their final two outs here in the top of the ninth inning. And a strike. Oh, that's a tough one right on the outside part of the plate. Got to gear up for that fastball. I think he came out of his delivery there. <laughs> Maybe just a little bit. Maybe overthrew that one. Boy, he's in a nice place right now. The count one and two. One away. Cabrera at first, and that pitch just misses. Down low and away. And the count now even at two balls and two strikes. And it appears as though this building is still going to haunt the Blue Jays. Unless they can have a little bit of ninth inning magic here. With one away and a runner at first. And the pitch foul the back. Fastball is not a problem for Colby Rasmus. I think the harder the ball's coming in there, the better he likes it. We saw him earlier this year turn around a Tommy Hunter fastball upper 90s for a home run that sent that game into extra innings in Baltimore. So left handed, right handed, no matter how hard it is. And that one just sailed inside and in. And Colby just standing there, like gazing out as Cabrera ends up at second base. Only the second time that the look at that one just take off. And second time that the Jays have had a runner in scoring position. Both times Cabrera. Wild pitch. Yeah, he doesn't need to overthrow. He throws hard enough. He doesn't need to reach back for anything more. He just needs to put it where he needs to. Right there. Colby strikes out. Last series win for the Jays at Tropicana Field, April of 2007, when they won the second and third games of that series. And here they are down to their final out, down 3 nothing in the top of the ninth inning in the final game before the All Star break. Pratt swings and he rips this one foul. Got to get it started. Looks like he might have broke his bat on that swing. He 
looking for the save. This fastball averages 96 miles an hour, which is the highest among American lefty relievers. How'd you like to deal with that in the ninth inning? After you face David Price. Price is looking to win his fourth in a row. And five of the last six. Right up the elevator shaft, but then it finds its way back behind home plate. It's been a tough road trip. And maybe this all star break comes at the right time. You could probably say that for both of these ball clubs. Oh, and two, two out. Runner at second is Cabrera. McGee to the plate. And the fastball lays his high and outside. 98. That one says 98. Pumped up for a little something extra again, and that ball took off on him. Look if he threw a breaking ball right here. That would help him to slow down. Kratz goes down swinging. And that'll do it. The Rays take the series from the Jays as they win here on this Sunday in the final game before the All-Star break. The All-Star game being held in Minneapolis, Minnesota, Target Field. The Rays win it 3 0. And David Price was dazzling in eight plus innings of work. Five hits, no runs. No errors, a walk at five strikeouts. And McGee came in, got the save. And for the Blue Jays, they're 49 and 47 at the break. Tough road trip, two and eight. And you're right, uh, four days off to get away from baseball for a little bit, regroup. Come out, you got a chance to have a good homestand next uh, after the break against Texas and Boston. They're going to have to do that uh, to stay in this race. 3 nothing here as the Rays shut out the Toronto Blue Jays. It's been a pleasure sitting in for Buck Martinez. Buck will be back right after the break against Texas. Oakland and Seattle a little bit later on, but right now here's Jamie Campbell.